All right, Joe, Jose Martinez of UTEP just not through a 49-yard field goal to give the Miners a 6 to nothing lead with 5.50 to go here under the lights of the Sun Bowl in El Paso, Texas. Number 10, Texas, taking on the Miners. I'm Mark Jones along with Bob Davey. This is the third meeting all time between these two teams. Bob, it's the first time Texas has played here at the Sun Bowl in the regular season. This game has been hyped up amped up for years literally well mark you and i talked about it if you just look at this game on paper it looks as though it'd be a mismatch with texas winning but you and i know fans all across this country though mike price knows you don't play these games on paper and this is a tremendous atmosphere here in the sun bowl and it has been all utep texas only running three offensive plays they were three and out martinez with a couple of field goals and this is season where the college football landscape has been littered by several upsets. Bob. Well, fans need more proof that upsets are a big part of college football every week. Here it is. That one at the bottom, East Carolina over West Virginia. Maybe not a huge upset, but a Conference USA school, just like the Miners. And Martinez, for the second time, knocks it out of the back of the end zone. Martinez with a field goal on the team's first possession. And then on its third possession, he knocks through another one. That one from a little further out, 49 yards out. UTEP comes into this ball game with a record of 0-1. They were tripped up last week up in Buffalo against UB. Texas in a blowout victory last week at home against Florida Atlantic University. Colt McCoy, a couple of years ago, was the freshman of the year nationally. They were three and out on their first possession. A flag down on the play, and Vondrell McGee goes down as well. We're going to get an offsides on this play. And one of the things, if you're Texas, you want to take the energy and the enthusiasm of UTEP and use it against them. Offsides, number 91 of the defense. Five-yard penalty, it is first down. When I, say, when I say that, Mark, use their energy against them, that time you saw Colt McCoy going a little bit longer count to draw El Paso offsides. When you talk about the energy in the Sun Bowl tonight, a sellout crowd of over 53,000 on hand. And speaking with some of the locals here, they'd say they all agree that this is the biggest thing to hit El Paso since Mick Jagger and the Stones <laughs> hit this place, hit the crib here a couple of years ago. McCoy pulls the trigger complete to number six, Quan Cosby. He's one of the favorite targets of the quarterback. He picks up six yards, and Cosby now has gone 33 consecutive games with a catch. When you talk about this atmosphere, one thing, this is the first game I've done out here in El Paso. They love to tailgate Mark Jones. <laughs> we saw it early this afternoon. They've had a hard time to get oiled up and get their game faces on. Colt McCoy breaking a couple of tacklers. And he is a deceivingly powerful and fast runner. And Bob, from the time that he was a freshman to now, he's put on a bunch well, of pounds. Mark, you look at him, he's starting to wear those shirts <laughs> up a little bit farther to show those arms off. I mean, he slapped together very athletic quarterback. Last week, I thought he played as fine a game as he's ever played in the opener against Florida Atlantic. Well, McCoy coached by his father, Brad McCoy, in high school, where he went 34-2 and two as a starter. Second and seven coming up. McCoy under duress. Downfield. A flag, and it's caught by Cosby. Quan Cosby took the elevator up top. Right over the top of Melvin Stevenson on the play, who was victimized. Pass interference. Number four of the defense. That we talked about how mobile Colt McCoy is. This all starts with him breaking contain right there, keeping the play alive. And then Quan Cosby, wow. <laughs> That's a vertical jump you can be proud of right there as he goes up and makes that catch. Texas into UTEP territory for the first time tonight. First down and 10 from the 35. Little receiver screen that time to the other side of the field. That's Jordan Shipley, Paul McCoy's roommate, a six-foot senior, picks up eight yards on the play. And these kind of plays could be very effective tonight. I'm talking about those screens as we look at Jordan Shipley because UTEP is a blitzing man-to-man -man defense that really gets up the field. Good way to counteract that, screens. 
And we alluded a little bit earlier in the show to the fact that they play a, that unorthodox 3-3-5 formation. This is Vondrell McGee stopped up right near the line of scrimmage. Maybe got a couple of yards, got four. Landon Goodwell, number 32, right there on your screen, making the stop, the 6-2 junior. For UTEP, Bob, tonight, as defensive coordinator, O.C. Lewis says it's about lining up in the right spot. Well, let's go back. Last year, UTEP finished 117th in total defense out of 119 teams. They bring in this guy, O.C. Lewis, as a defensive coordinator. They got off to a poor start last week at Buffalo, so confidence is key. McCoy completes the pass to Shipley. Shipley pushed out of bounds at the 17-yard line by Anthony Morrow. Colt McCoy last year according to some standards quote-unquote struggled he was he threw 22 touchdowns and 18 interceptions Jordan Shipley one of his favorite targets along with Quan Cosby both have receptions already in the ballgame and they both seem like they've been around here forever and it's both <laughs> fifth year players in fact Jordan Shipley is going to petition for a sixth year second down and three little fade complete touchdown boy that looked easy Quan Cosby for the score. Melvin Stevenson was beaten on the play. If you're going to come up and play bump and run, you better get a jam at the line of scrimmage. Melvin Stevenson that time just didn't get any jam to redirect the release of Quan Cosby. That was just too easy. For Cosby, that's his first touchdown catch of the season. And the tenth of his career. Hunter Lawrence in for the extra point. And the Longhorns take the lead 7 to 6. 313 to go in the first quarter. A couple of schools separated by about 580 miles of long Texas straight flat interstate. But you know what? Sometimes you're on the right train and the right track. That's what Quarterback and receiver on that time, McCoy in Clint Mountains here in El Paso, Texas. Juan Cosby and Colt McCoy teaming up for a touchdown a few moments ago, capping a seven-play, 80-yard drive, eclipsing just a little over two and a half minutes on the clock in Texas, retaking the lead, seven to six. Justin Tucker kicking off, and back deep, it's Chris Adams and Terrell Jackson for UTEP. <laughs> and this, too, goes out of the back of the end zone. Miners will start off on their own 20-yard line. I'm Mark Jones along with Bob Davey. Thanks for coming aboard. This is the third meeting all time, Bob, between these two teams. But the gravity of this game locally within the state is huge when you look at so many different variables. Mark, I had a chance to live in this state for nine years. And I think you own they, Texas. Man. Well, I'm not sure about that. the king that. of the living room, I was told. I'm not sure of that, but I appreciate <laughs> that. But having lived here, I understand. You've seen it today, the magnitude of getting the Longhorns out here in El Paso. I mean, great setting. This stadium sold out. They did a poll in the local paper. Who you're going to root for? 75% here in El Paso said they're rooting for their mind even though the big-time UT Longhorns are in town. I'll tell you a sneaky nice move by some of the Longhorns as we get the flag call here. Illegal substitution on the defense, 12 men. Five-yard penalty. It is first down. What about the fact that some Longhorn fans bought some minor season ticket packages yeah. Yeah. so that they can good get tickets for this game. Well, it's, another, it's impact, for a while. another impact of the Longhorns coming here. They've sold 25,000 season tickets. A bunch of Longhorns bought those $99 ticket plans so they didn't have to mess with just getting an individual ticket here today. They were all at our hotel today. It seemed like it anyway in the lobby. Vitito hands it off to Jackson. Nice straight arm and got about five yards on the play as we take a look at some of the real key cogs. Alabama, two places Mike Price coached at previously. Mike Price in his fifth year as head coach here at UTEP. Jackson again. Stopped up short. Lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. Miller making the stop that time. Miller, one of the anchor guys inside for Texas and Will Muschamp, the defensive coordinator. Well, he was brought in for one reason, get this defense playing like a Texas Longhorn defense is supposed to play. Last year, they ended up 52nd in the country in total defense, gave up 43 to Texas Tech, 41 to Kansas State, 38 to A&M, and 35 to Oklahoma State. If I'm getting into coaching, I want to be an offensive coordinator. You are right about that. <laughs> Not defensive coordinator these days. <laughs> 
Second down and 11 now. Vitito. A field and incomplete. That one intended for Chris Adams. And here's what's in the hopper tonight. Some of the interesting things that we will be presenting. What about Jose Martinez and a potential NCAA field goal record being set tonight? Mike Price has said he'll let it rip. He'll let him go from 70 yards out. Okay, he kicked one to Juarez in pregame one. Like that. <laughs> Vitito. Nobody home. And Will Muschamp really hyped up. You see him with the headset on, air punching. Boy, he's had about six glasses of Red Bull. <laughs> or is he always like that? <laughs> Mark, this first punt right here is really critical. You look at Jamar Hunt, their deep snapper. Look at that big old cast on that hand. Heard it last week against Buffalo. Texas back to blocking kicks this year. Last year, they did not block a punt, which is unheard of for them. And Bob, in addition to the snap here, Kyle Peterson dropped his first snap last week against Buffalo. He must have heard us, Mark. He's going to call timeout right here. Uh, he might be counting up guys, seeing if they have enough men on the field. And a morose-looking Mike Price on the sidelines. Two things on this punt. You see the deep snapper for UTEP with that big old cast. I mentioned Texas, renowned as a punt block team. Keep your eye on Earl Thomas, number 12. He's the second guy in right here. Blocked one last week against FAU. Nobody's blocked more punts and kicks since 2000 than the Texas Longhorns. Not a great effort that time by Peterson. Out of bounds at the 43-yard line. And it might have been tipped a little bit last year. Monday Night Football on ESPN begins at 7 Eastern. First and 10, good starting field position this time for Texas. McCoy completes it. Chris Obanaya makes the catch for the first down at the 40-yard line, picking up 13. Something you're going to notice, Texas rolling Colt McCoy out to get away from that inside blitzing UTEP defense. You look right here, they're sliding that whole pocket just to eliminate that inside pressure. Excellent throw on the run right there by Colt. Talked about his prolific numbers last week, 24 of 29. Complete again here at the 33-yard line. That's number three, Chris Obanaya once again. And Bob, last week, he was 24-29, had three passes dropped on him. Well, he completed his first 13 passes. Again, though, you see them roll the protection. That's not easy to do, throwing to your left right there for a right-end quarterback. And how about Obanaya, the running back slash wide receiver lined up out there in space? Obanaya still in the ballgame, second down and two. McCoy now checking at the line. Wide open at the 30-yard line. That's number nine, Malcolm Williams, out of Garland, Texas. One of several Texas-born players here on the field. He picks up seven. We talked about Colt McCoy. Great freshman season. When he came in, replaced Vince Young, had 29 touchdowns. A lot of people thought he had a sophomore slump last year. The reason Greg Davis thought he did, they asked him to do too much at the line of scrimmage. Tried to make him a coach on the field. They've simplified just a little bit, and he is on fire early in this season. Sure is. Vondrell McGee in a tailback. He takes the handoff. Lost his hat and is brought down. There's a flag on the play. Looks like it might be a face mask. Steve Riddick, the nose guard, number 95. May have grabbed a big old piece of that Longhorn helmet. And of course, this year, Bob, there is no more five yard version of the penalty. It's just 15 yards. You're going to see that UTEP defense, because they blitz, they're going to force some bad plays like the one you just saw. Steve Riddick 
95 from right here in El Paso. Great effort play. Unfortunate right there that he grabbed a piece of that nose guard. Excuse me, a piece of that face mask. Open eye in the ball game. Two tight ends, two wide outs. First and 10 from the 13 for Colt McCoy. Hands it off to Obanaya, tripped up in the backfield and fell forward, gaining about two yards on the play. Number 93, Torrey Robinson, making the stop on the play. Robinson, an interesting story, he was just cleared to play a little over 24 hours ago by the NCAA Clearinghouse. They got some administrative things out of the way, and the young man was able to suit up and play. But he had been practicing, so once he got that green light, <laughs> Mike Price is glad to see him out there making some plays. Well, the first 15 minutes are in the books. The Longhorns in tough so far against their cross-state rivals. Back under the lights at the Sun Bowl here in El Paso, Texas. I wonder how much those seats cost, Bob uh, Davey. Huh? Could cost you your life. <laughs> Drop that, that elevation <laughs> on a rocky. A sold-out stadium here. Overflow crowd of over 53,000. You know, Mark, they've averaged 42,000 a game the last four years under Mike Price. Wow. Second down and nine, McCoy. Thought about running wide open, touchdown Longhorns. Buckner with the grab. How difficult it is when you have a quarterback as athletic as Colt McCoy to stay in coverage that long because the tendency is for the defensive back to look back at the quarterback. See him looking back because he thought Colt McCoy was going to scramble. Cornelius Brown, 47, will learn all you do in man-to-man -man coverage, concentrate on the receiver, Mark. But how difficult with an athletic quarterback like Colt McCoy. He has really rounded out his game. Last week we mentioned he ran for over 100 yards, getting in touch with his inner Vince Young. The extra point good. Texas leading by eight. Wendy Nix back in the studio. Wendy? All right, Wendy, going to be a little rough in uh, the 305 when I get back to South Florida. But, uh, Miami just searching for yeah. offense. I mean, yeah. they have struggled incredibly on offense. Now, I realize Marv, the young quarterback, his first start tonight. Yeah, Ja'Cory Harris also got a couple of snaps. Meanwhile, Colt McCoy with two touchdowns in his last five passes. What a great story. Colt McCoy comes from a town of 714 people. One red light, and you know it's a small town. You ever been town. to Tuscola? I can't say that I have, but let me <laughs> say this. You know it's a small town in Texas when there is no Dairy Queen. Wow. Because you and I know there's Dairy Queens in every small town in we, Texas. We've found a few of them. 34 and 2 as a starter in high school playing for his father Brad McCoy who also played football at Abilene Christian never has had an alcoholic beverage hasn't had a carbonated beverage since 1999 he and I could never go out to eat together <laughs> <laughs> just underway here in the second quarter the third meeting all time between Texas and Utah This is the first time, well, we almost saw a kickoff return tonight. Well, at 11, the Jessica Simpson thing. They, they still an item, Bob? I knew you, you hit were the going You hit the gossip I things, mean, man. People you, magazine I come to you for the news. one <laughs> source of information. Isn't it? She's a bit of a jinx, though, when she shows up. James Darn, Thomas stop. in the ball game. That pass complete to James Thomas, who has a first down. Thomas, the 5'11 sophomore, he's actually the third-string quarterback for the Miners. Picks up 15. Yeah, it was an excellent option quarterback. And how about Mike Price? You know, they went up to Buffalo and got beat last week. To clean the slate, he has an actual windshield in the meeting room. <laughs> and the windshield wiper will turn and clear the windshield and pop up the logo of the next team. Love so it. to wipe the slate clean, he actually has a windshield. That he uses as a prop because I know you love more. Yo, I'd love any kind of gimmick <laughs> more than just symbolic. First down and ten after the catch by Thomas. This is Jackson over the right side. Nice cut, and Jackson picks up about six yards. Terrell Jackson, the transfer from Oregon, behind a nice block from Jamar Hunt. Jackson, Buckram, Palmer all doing it by committee 
at the tailback spot, but Jackson getting the bulk of the carries tonight so far. Yeah, Mike Price in his fifth year here spoiled him. First two years he goes to the Houston Bowl, GMAC Bowl, spoiled the fan base a little bit too quickly. Last two years they've struggled a little bit, but they love him here in El Paso. Yeah, they're still very excited about things, especially this game tonight at a huge Montapalooza Peck Riley, as they call it, last night. And they've come out and played extremely well here early in this game. I think. Second down and three, going up top. And good coverage down the sidelines. And a flag thrown late on the play. Shockey Brown on the coverage for Texas. And Pass interference, number eight of the defense. 15 yard penalty. It is first down. That's going to go against Brown. Boy, I didn't see much right there. I mean, that looked like textbook coverage. Vitito wasn't sure either. Now, <laughs> he reacted when he saw the flag. I think he saw that the way I saw it. That looked like good coverage on that replay. Yeah, he wasn't protesting too hard for the call. Vitito, an interesting story. Another one of those guys. I mean, Matt Brown can't recruit them all in this state. <laughs> Vitito, a young guy from Euless Trinity High School outside of Dallas, only threw the ball 10 times a game in high school. Nobody recruited him. First down and 10. This crowd just waiting to explode here. Vitito, incomplete. Talked about the anticipation leading up to this game. Last night, as part of the activity, space painting, dump tanks at Minor Palooza can climb up a wall. And this is a mining town that has always prided itself on putting in a good day's work, and the enthusiasm was <laughs> rife last night. Well, this atmosphere here is as good as any atmosphere you're going to find anywhere in the country. I don't care if you go to a Big 12 stadium, wherever. This is a big-time atmosphere in El Paso. They should be proud of this. Second down and 10. Reverse. Boy, that thing imploded and it was blown up, actually, by Texas up front. Eddie Jones there to make the stop, number 32. They ran the reverse to James Thomas. And it all started with the penetration of Roy Miller in the backfield right there, disrupted the handoff, and then Eddie Jones cleaned it up. Tough to run those things against just a penetrating, attacking defense. And Mark Jones, I'm going to check you out and let you call this one right here on third down and 23. Third what's and in 23. your bag of tricks right here? <laughs> oh, thanks for the call. What's, uh, in the what's, uh, what's in the hopper on this one? I would say maybe a little jailbreak I like screen. That. I love that call. Oh, you like I that call? I love that call. Maturi has been conspicuous by his silence so far, and a flag is thrown. Delay. Five-yard penalty gets the offense. It is. Third down. Can you let me call the next one, too? <laughs> still got it. Now, third down and 28 to go. Trevor Vitito last week, uh, a little bit, little bit anxious throwing three interceptions. Mike Price uh, had a funny quote when we saw him earlier yesterday. People asked him about Texas. He said, hey, I just hope Texas isn't as good as Buffalo. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Oh, the draw, the infamous draw play. Jackson got back a lot of the yardage into Texas territory, but still about, well, 13 yards short of the first down. He picked up 14 on the play. Remember, Jose Martinez has an exceptionally strong leg. He's made a field goal from 70 yards out in practice, and in all fairness, Place kickers don't like you to mention this, but we are at altitude at about 3,800 feet. So he is on the field. They're going to spot it at his own 45-yard line. Mark, they may snap it to him and let him punt this football right here. I know he has a strong leg. I'm not sure he's going to try this field goal. 65 yards. He was knocking him through from 60 earlier. This one looks like it's dead on. And he comes up about three yards short. He's bringing it out. They better cover it. Juan Cosby has some blockers in front of him and takes it all the way back 
to the 37-yard line. So field position, the wild card, in the long field goal attempt. Everybody kind of went to sleep and was in awe of the kick, Bob. You, you see the look on Mike Price's face? If you're going to try one of those long field goals, you better cover it like a punt. Moments ago, Jose Martinez, that guy on your screen, missing what would have been an NCAA tying field goal attempt from 65 well, yards. Let's take a look at this. After the kick by Martinez, we have a lot of guys viewing this game from the stands, but right here, <laughs> we have 21 spectators on that field, and the only guy playing is Quan Crosby. We had 21 guys on each side of that field watching that kick. They got kind of seduced by the the whole sizzle and sexiness of that long field goal attempt, but we want to mention to everybody right now that they are reviewing the play because Quan Cosby, who ran it back all the way into minor territory, may have stepped on the end line in the end zone. I just don't think how they can overturn this call because right here, you're not going to find better officiating. His eyes are burnt on that line. So I don't know how that replay could show you more than what that official said. One returner did not step on the end line. First down, Texas. I'll tell you, Quan Cosby deserves kudos for not falling asleep like everybody else on that. And he returned it 65 yards off the 65-yard field goal miss. And you really do have to question. I understand how strong Martinez's leg is. I really thought they would pooch punt that and direct snap it to him. John Childs is in the ball game. Number seven right there at the bottom of your screen. And he's he the back is of the quarterback. original slash. <laughs> he is a heck of an athlete at about 220 pounds. They talked about trying to get him involved a little bit more. This is Vondrell McGee on the carry. Picks up about five on the play. Brought down by Dew. John Childs, uh, one of the fastest players on that Texas roster as McGee comes out of the game. What happens in an atmosphere like this? Even a coach like Mike Price that's been around so long, he almost tried too hard to do something for the crowd. I don't like that call of that long field goal. Trying to hit a home run on that last field goal attempt. This is Fosse Whitaker in the ball game, his first carry, and Whitaker finding a little room over the right side. Martin Gramatica holds the NCAA record for field goal attempt from 65 yards out. That was set back in 1998. And Martinez would have tied it had he made it a few moments ago. That's where he learned that little celebration. <laughs> a little dance. Before he injured himself. <laughs> 13 yards on the gain by Fozzie Whitaker. And Whitaker gets it again, has the equal amount of success. Got about eight yards that time. Brought down by Morrill. A lot of people say this may be one of the best offensive lines that Texas has ever had. You see Cedric Dockery right there, 55. His brother was a great play at Texas. Now in the NFL, gets an outstanding block. They are big. They are talented. Last year, they had a lot of injuries up front. Forced them to play a lot of players. As this season goes on, that's going to be an excellent offensive line. You see the size differential Huge. right there. Second down and two coming up for the Longhorns. Once again, it's Whitaker. And Whitaker all the way down to the two-yard line, stopped up by Adam Vinson. First and goal to goal coming up for the Texas Longhorns. Yeah, Fuzzy Whitaker didn't play last week, had an ankle against Buffalo, but he was actually the star of the spring. They say he is the back they have, Mark, that has that wild back. Shakes and bakes can make people miss. After the eight-yard pickup, it's first down and goal. Big fullback in the game for the Longhorns. He leads the way, and they punch it in. Touchdown, Cody Johnson. So, after the Martinez missed field goal and the 65-yard return off the missed kick by Cosby, Texas able to convert and score. Cody Johnson with his second rushing touchdown of the season. They were working with a short field. Always a risk reward with every decision you make yeah. as a head football coach. That decision by Mike Price had too much risk, I think. Lawrence knocks through the extra point. 
Colt McCoy, very efficient so far here in the first half for the Texas Longhorns. We'll be right as Mexico across the Rio Grande River, and that is the incomparable mascot of college football, Bevo. That's a great mug right there, isn't it? That's 1,700 pounds worth of Bevo right there. I know the whole story why they named it Bevo, too. I, uh, if I could borrow your telestrator at some point tonight, I, could, I can show people. It's, it's a visual thing. Right now, though, Texas leading 21-6 to six after that touchdown. UTEP jumped into a 6 to nothing lead early in the first quarter, but Texas has touchdowns on its last three drives since. And this one goes out of the back of the end zone. Miners will start off first down and 10 from their 20-yard line. Mark Jones along with Bob Davey here at the sold-out Sun Bowl, over 53,000 on hand. Bob, when you talk about Texas, ranked number 10 in the country coming in. They won the national championship three years ago. Two 10-win seasons, but they're under the radar. That's nuts. That's number crazy. 10, yeah. Number 10 preseason under the radar. I mean, seven straight 10-win seasons for Mac Brown. Five straight bowl wins. But people now say, can you win without Vince Young? That's crazy. Is it never good enough? I mean, he's done an unbelievable job at the University of Texas. Back to the line of scrimmage is Jackson, and nobody has won more games than Texas under Mac Brown during the last 10 years. You look at where they are in the conference this year, it, the schedule kind of helps them a little bit if they get by a couple of early bumps. Well, what it's going to come down to, in my mind, is pass defense, and that young secondary, because in the Big 12, teams throw the football around. They have Missouri coming up, and we had Missouri last right. week. It's going to come down to what kind of job Will Muskamp can do with this young Texas secondary. No gain on first down, second down and 10 coming up. Vidido eludes trouble and completes the pass. Number two, Chris Adams gets the first down for the Miners, picking up 16. Arakpo providing pressure up front for the Longhorns. There's a look at the schedule. The two bumps I alluded to, Oklahoma and Missouri. Well, at Colorado, Oklahoma, Missouri at home, at Texas Tech, also Kansas. And don't forget, Texas A&M, the Aggies have beat them two straight years to end the season. So that is a very tough schedule. Mac Brown has 18 consecutive winning seasons, 16 consecutive bowl games that he's been to. Jackson with a nice gain beyond the 40 to the 41-yard line, picked up five on the play. You know, we talked to Mac Brown at length this week. He's having genuine fun coaching this football team. It's a young team. The expectation is not quite as high. He said the last two years haven't been that much yeah. fun after the national championship. He went back in the bowl game last year after the loss to A&M, and he opened it up competition at every position, high expectations every day in practice, and he's kept that competitive edge with these players, and it's really working out. On second down and five, a blitz coming by the Longhorns. Benito had his man, and it's incomplete. He was wide open, but Maturi couldn't hang on to it. Boy, and he had nothing but empty grass ahead of him, Bob. You hit the nail on the head. I mean, it was like the Red Sea. It just parted. Watch Maturi after the scramble. If you take a look right here, there is nothing but green grass and touchdown if that ball is completed. Wow, Mark, yeah. that was a tremendous opportunity for the Miners. It produces a third down in five. They could use a little success here to stem the momentum held by Texas right now and a nice catch and that's going to be enough for the first down Jackson coming out of the backfield right at the 46 yard line it looks like it's enough for the first down with 722 to go here in the first half of play getting back to Mac Brown I really admire the fact that he's been able to morph and change what he has and adapt to who he has his personnel and you know a couple years ago talking with Vince Young and being able to be a little bit more lenient to the point where he let them listen to some of the music that he didn't really approve of but exactly. now he's got 50 300 songs on his iPod exactly but I'm gonna tell you this if Vince Young 
<laughs> requested some music in the locker room. I'd probably bend a little bit, too. So I'm not sure Mac Brown's unique in that aspect. But I thought he made a great point. You know, this is his 11th year at Texas. He's approaching this year like it's his first. He's starting completely over. Had knee replacement. Said he feels better than he ever felt. I mean, he's energized. Yeah. You could tell talking to him before the game, he is energized. And I think Will Muskamp coming over from Auburn with the kind of energy he brings, I think that's helped as yeah. well. Mac Brown saying the only thing that worries him is the fact that people on campus and in Austin think they're a little bit, might be a little bit better than they really are. There's a lot of studs on that team. Vitito fires high and incomplete at the 30 yard line for James Thomas. And sets up a third down and five. Texas with some young talent. I mean, particularly number two, Sergio Kendall, a linebacker out of Dallas. Highly recruited player, tremendous amount of potential. Everybody's been waiting on him a little bit in Austin. Will Muscamp using him as a pass rusher has really added to his game, Mark, and taking advantage of his talent. He is a great looking guy now. Right now holding it down on defense. Vitito, meanwhile, has missed seven of his last nine. Make that eight of his last ten. Fourth down and five coming up. A lot of pressure that time. Both linebackers, Roderick McElroy and Sergio Kendall. And all of a sudden, that momentum UTEP had early in the game, Mark, clearly on the side of the Longhorns right now. There's Muskamp on the sidelines. Last week got so excited, Bob, he ripped off his headset and in the process cut himself and didn't realize that it was bleeding, bleeding profusely while he was talking to his players. And they didn't know what to make of it. <laughs> Just kind of staring at him. Worked down in five. Texas might have gotten a piece of that. Partially blocked on the play. Aaron Williams got in there for the Longhorns and got a hand on that. We talked about Texas the most kicks blocked in all of college football since 2000 with 49. Did not block a punt last year. They blocked once again, one against Florida Atlantic, and they get another one, a piece of one. Texas leading 21 to 6 with just under six minutes to go here in the first half. I'm Mark Jones along with Bob Davey. UTEP having troubles with their long snapper. Well, Mark, you watch your motto right there. I mean, that was an accurate snap right there. I'm not sure everybody enjoyed the results of that snap, but you mentioned they have had trouble both deep snaps early in this game. Their tight end, Jamar Hunt, with that big old cast who is their long snapper. I think we're going to see a motto here. If uh, UTEP's put in a passing in a punting situation again. And Peterson has had trouble handling those punts too. He dropped the last one. This is the worst starting field position for either team tonight. Texas first and 10 from the 14 out of the backfield and incomplete to Whitaker as let's head back to. All right, Wendy. And back here with just under six minutes to go. Second down and 10 for the Texas Longhorns. Coming into this game, ranked number 10 in the country. Coming off of an impressive win last week against Florida Atlantic. An impressive pass and catch. Quan Cosby on the loose. Into minor territory at the 45-yard line. Already has a touchdown catch tonight. That time victimizing Cornelius Brown. Mark, if you're going to blitz everybody, you better have good corners. I mean, this right here. That is a lonely feeling. Look at all this grass in here for the receiver to work with. Texas overloads the formation to the field. It's just one-on-one -on -one into the boundary, and Cornelius Brown cannot cover Quan Cosby one-on-one. -on -one. But a great throw and read by Colt McCoy. First down and 10 from the 46 for the Longhorns. McCoy, quick three-step drop, complete once again to Cosby. Cosby using that 10.400 meter speed, Bob. Again, just a perfectly timed route, but too easy, Mark. If you have all that space inside you as a defensive back, you better line up inside and force that receiver to the boundary. That's just too easy of a pitch and catch in the middle of the field. I say Lewis, the new defensive coordinator for UTEP, trying to get his guys to simply line up right. That's half the battle. And off to Whitaker, and Whitaker got about three yards on the play, where he's brought down by Adam Vincent. You know, getting back to Quan Cosby, who's made several big catches tonight, Bob. Number six for Texas. 
former Texas high school state sprint champ in the 100 meters and 200 meters, ran a 10.4 back in the day, but a little unique in that he's a little bit older than most of his teammates, 25 years old, a former professional baseball prospect. Yeah, spent four years, I believe, in the Anaheim organization. Third down and short for Texas. Handoff. And Whitaker falls forward. He might have gotten the first down with that last gasp lunge effort. He's right on that line indicating the first down. And they're going to give it to him. Tell you, this Texas offense, you go back to last week against Florida Atlantic, who's a pretty good football team. They come out and have 52 points, 503 yards, 232 rush, 271 pass. Very balanced as a football team. And I'll tell you something, Colt McCoy right now, a lot of great quarterbacks in the Big 12. This guy's climbing that list as a junior. Yeah, he's just bought gone over 7,000 yards total offense in his career. Obanai in the backfield beside McCoy. McCoy going up top, has a man. A flag thrown as Shipley tried to break free from the defensive back. And there's a flag thrown on the play. Jordan Shipley, number eight, with a nice burst. Again, man-to-man -man coverage. Shipley just runs by number 34, Martel Strange. Shipley is a guy who runs very well. Fifth-year players had a lot of leg injuries. He was the all-time leading pass receiver in Texas high school history. He was also coached by his dad. His dad was roommates with Colt McCoy's dad at Abilene Christian. Now Colt McCoy and Shipley room together in the pass. Defense problems for UTEP continue. Hard to play that blitzing defense if you can't cover one-on-one. -on -one. Pass interference, the call against UTEP. First down and 10 now from the 22-yard line. McCoy downfield, wide open, touchdown, Texas. Blaine Irby. Blaine Irby, kind of an undersized tight end out of California. Last week, UTEP had some busts in coverage. That was what you call a breakdown in coverage again this week. That was just too easy. That entire yeah. drive, as good as Texas is, was too easy. Nobody within touching distance of Irby on that touchdown throw and catch. That was the second touchdown reception of the season for Irby. Who last week had a very prolific week for the Longhorns, had seven catches for 62 yards, and Texas leading 28 to 6. Colt McCoy firing on all. A couple of years ago, Colt McCoy was the national freshman of the year. Last year, he quote unquote slumped with only 22 touchdown passes, but in sync here tonight, and he moves into fifth in Texas history with that last drive. He's at 10 of his last 11 passes and three touchdown passes on the night. Cosby, this one to Buckner, and then the last one moments ago to Blaine Irby. At this point in the season, and I know it's early in the season, you could not have played any better than Colt McCoy has played here through a game and a half. Go back to last week against Florida Atlantic. He completes his first 13 passes, 24 for 29, 103 yards rushing. This guy used to look like he's like he was 12 years old a couple years ago. When he started as a freshman, he looked like Opie, facial. Yeah. Now the only thing that looks young on him is his face. I mean, his body has matured. It certainly has. Chris Adams on the kickoff return for the Miners. Breaks a couple of tackles out to the 23. All right, Wendy and the Miners back here in El Paso trying to make something happen, Bob, offensively before the end of the first half. After leading six to nothing, Texas with 28 unanswered points. Jackson dancing between the tackles. Nice run of about seven. You have the feeling that UTEP can move the football a little bit. The problem is they cannot slow the Longhorns down at all. And this crowd has disappeared emotionally from this yeah. stadium. One thing about a crowd that gets tuned up early all day, right. when it goes bad, it can go pretty bad. 
And they have lost their stinger right now. It's a long fall, huh? <laughs> Jackson, meanwhile, he's run pretty well tonight. 14 times for a career high. 85 yards. Yeah, those fans, Bob. Yeah. Uh, that's Excedrin headache number 45 right there. Second down and three. It's over the play fake. Complete over the middle at the 48-yard line. That's going to be a first down. And Maturi with the catch for the Miners. Just over three minutes to go in the half into Texas territory. Just an excellent route by Jeff Maturi. Runs a deep square in right here against zone coverage. You see they're in a two-safety look. Big hole in there. Excellent throw and catch right there. Young guy signed it with Houston out of high school. They didn't have a scholarship for him, Mark. They ended up walking on here at UTEP. Mike Price said he doesn't say a word. Very quiet young man. His game doing all his talking so far. Makes another catch. And about two yards short of the first down. Jeff Maturi once again. He had one catch in 06. Last year burst on the scene with 65 catches. So he went from 1 in 06 to 65 in 07. I mean, this says it all. A lot of big plays by Texas. UTEP with 10 more plays. That doesn't matter. Wow. Those yards and points are what matter. So it's been the big explosions by the Texas offense. Second down and two for the Miners. Pass complete once again. Just shy of the 30-yard line. Vitito getting a little bit of rhythm back. Going to his main man, Jeff Maturi. Crowd wanted a face mask right there on number 11, Jared Norton from Texas. Probably should have had it right there. It looked like he did get a little bit of that face mask. You know, speaking with Maturi yesterday, he may not say much, Bob, but he's a smart cat. He said, what's your favorite class? He said, women's studies. And he smiled. <laughs> I said, why is that? He goes, well, the, the makeup of the class is pretty good. <laughs> First and 10. Vitito, this time going to try and take off with it. Does a nice job down to the 22-yard line, just shy of the first down. Let's go back to that last call or non-call with Jared Norton, number 11. This is probably a good example this year in college football of no more five-yard face mask. Because he did not grab and turn the head, it wasn't called. Do you like the new rule? Yeah, I do. Because a year ago, that probably would have been a five-yard penalty. As long as you let go of it and there's no risk injury, I think you let him play. Second down and one coming up for the Miners. Got one timeout remaining to use. Vitito through a dart complete. And that's going to be a first down. Evan Davis hanging on to it in traffic. 41 seconds to go. You see the arm strength of Trevor Vitito, 5A state champs when he was at Dallas Gillis Trinity High School. We mentioned he only threw the ball 10 or 12 times a game. Aaron Price went up and recruited him, had to scout him in pregame yeah. warm-up so he could get enough throws to evaluate. Came back and told Dad that, hey, this guy can make all the throws. Vitito under some heat. Blitz coming, he gets it away. Nice blitz coming from Blake Gideon, the freshman. One of those young safeties that Mac Brown was really concerned about, but Gideon made a nice play along with Kindle. Yeah, Blake Gideon, 21, you see him coming on the blitz. His dad coached him in high school, an early enrollee at Texas. Five safeties on Texas roster, all five are freshmen. I don't know that I've ever seen that. But the good news, they may be freshmen, but they're talented. A few more games into the season, they won't be considered freshmen anymore. Good job by Vitito, though, just getting rid of that football so he didn't take a big loss. Yeah, Bob, he was 5 for 5 before that last incompletion. Nine seconds to go on that 40-second play clock. they got to get this one off. They barely do. Vitito coming back the other way, wide open. Touchdown! Shadrawi.
They couldn't have asked for a better play going into the locker room at halftime. Vitito with his second touchdown pass this season and the 27th of his career. And Martinez good with the extra point. Big so, drive by UTEP, Mark, and really a well-designed play. You're going to watch Texas man-to-man -man coverage. UTEP's going to run these receivers off, and they're going to bring the young guy underneath. And any time you have that kind of traffic, it's tough to play man-to-man -man coverage. Should draw away on the crossing route right there. Some confusion in the Texas secondary. Number 12, Earl Thomas, another freshman safety. Big score for this crowd and also this UTEP football team. Yeah, they came alive. And you're going to see the Achilles heel potentially for Texas as this season progresses. When you look at their schedule in the Big 12, past defense, can they mature enough in the secondary? And in the Big 12 against those good quarterbacks, it's going to be tough. Well, the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series heads to Richmond. It's now or never for Jeff Gordon, Casey Kane, and Clint Boyer. They each have one last shot to make it into the chase. The NASCAR Sprint Cup Series Chevy Rock and Roll 400 at Richmond on ESPN Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern. You're going to, you're going to get back to Miami. Uh -huh. Ike's going to stay south. You're going to be relaxed. You're just going to kick couch. back and watch some NASCAR. Aren't on you? the on couch Sunday. with that remote Tell control. me, are you going, you going to watch NASCAR? I'll, I'll, I'll rev up anything, Bob. I'll throw it on the, on the TV. Well, there's some light air out of here because every one of these kicks <laughs> just about go out of the stadium. You notice that, huh? Juan Cosby has been one of the key cogs for Texas offensively in this game. Going up high to make this reception. That was early. And then his first touchdown catch. And a little pitch and run. And at some point, well, not at some point, always on point, recruiting. When you have one guy that's faster and the other team can't cover him, what a huge advantage. And tonight, they cannot cover Juan Cosby in this football game. Juan Cosby, the only thing you can really be a nitpick about, can't hit it curveball or a changeup. <laughs> That's why he's playing football again. Batted 249, Bob. This is Obanaya. And Obanaya tiptoes out of bounds at the 35-yard line. Pretty good stat call right there for Greg Davis in this Texas offense. I thought they might just take a knee right there. But potentially, Mark, right here, a Hail Mary situation. Launch the football down the field. Maybe you get a pass interference. The half can't end on a pass interference, or you get a big play. They've been good, and they've been fortunate here in the first half. They've scored touchdowns on their last four drives. First and ten. Nine seconds to go in the four. But McCoy dragged down at the 40-yard line with one second to go. Some of his teammates looking for that horse collar penalty. They won't get it, though. And that's going to be the last play of the first half. The first 30 minutes in the books here in El Paso, Texas. We're at halftime with the score. Texas leading 28 to Texas.